Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton and beyond. Konnichiwa, Sato Sayaka desu. This week, we have a heart to heart with Sayaka Sato of Japan as the women s i n g l e player tells us about the challenges she has faced to stay competitive in a demanding women's field. And we report on how the SCG Thailand Open has reinvented itself to captivate fans in Bangkok. Before All England champion and Rio Olympic bronze medalist Nozomi Okuhara and two time world junior champion and recent Victor Korea Open winner Akane Yamaguchi became household names, there were others proudly flying the Japan flag in women's singles on the international scene. One of them is Sayaka Sato. The left hander was touted as the next generation of Japanese women's shuttlers in the solo discipline. When the then 17 year old stormed into the runner up spot at the 2008 World Junior Championships. That result alerted the national selectors who came knocking on her door. I was surprised as I didn't expect to make it to the national team, so I was very happy. Sayaka started to make her mark on the senior circuit, picking up international titles the following year. But her promising career came crashing down. When she sustained a serious knee injury at the most crucial time of an athlete's career, the Olympics. The injury at the 2012 London Summer Games cost her dearly, and it would take Sayaka more than a year before she was ready to compete again. After I started competing again, I couldn't play as well as I used to. So, yes, at times, I thought of giving up. But the fighter in Sayaka kept her going. Badminton Unlimited caught up with the Sendai born shuttler in Tokyo as she recalled her journey to recovery and her will to survive in an intensely competitive women's singles field. My motivation was strong as I was eager to catch up with everyone. Previously, it was always the Chinese players who won the medals, but now things are changing. And the top 10 players are very close. So I have a chance. Anyone can win or lose, as how it has happened in this Olympics. Before the unfortunate career threatening injury, Sayaka was moving steadily up the world rankings. She won her first international title at the 2009 New Zealand Open Grand Prix and was a finalist at the 2010 Indonesia Open. Ranked 15th in the world in 2011, Sayaka was Japan's leading lady, and with consistent strong latter stage finishes at major tournaments, the shuttler qualified for sport's biggest event in 2012. She was Japan's only women singles Olympic representative in London. When I was selected for the London Olympics, I felt it was what I had been striving for the last four years. I honestly didn't think that I would get the chance to go, but I wanted to go for those who supported me. So I was very happy when I was told I've qualified. But a bright start to her Olympic campaign ended in tears after badly twisting her knee. Sayaka was leading 14 10 in the opener of her quarterfinal match against Denmark's Tina b a u n when she landed awkwardly while returning a shot. Despite attempting to play on, gritting through pain in her knee, she was forced to accept her London 2012 bid was over at 15 14. I couldn't just end with the injury. I was very frustrated thinking about all the hard work that I had put into the last four years. That was why I felt I had to play on for as long as I could, even if it was just for another minute. My injuries, arterial cruciate ligament, medial collateral ligament, and meniscus, they were all damaged. It's called the deadly triangle because I sustained all three at the same time. It took over a year to recover. The recuperation period was tough on Sayaka as there were doubts if she could get back to the form she had before. But encouragement and support from her family and fans helped her through the testing period. 
それで怪我をしてそれで怪我をしてそれで怪我をしてそれで怪我をしてそれで怪我をしてそれで怪我をしてそれで怪我をしてそれで怪我をしてそれで怪我をしてそれで怪我をしてそれで怪我をしてそれで怪我をしてそれで怪我をして Ranked 16th in the world before her injury, Sayaka had to start from scratch. Languishing below 200th in the world rankings, when she made her comeback, Japan's former top shuttler in women's singles had to also change her game and style of play. Since their injuries, my body wasn't moving as well as before. So I realized that my aggressive style did not suit me anymore. So I worked on defense, which wasn't my strongest point. But I continued to work on it. And now I play more rallies. I would then wait for the right time to finish off the shot. Her persistence and hunger for success started to reap results. Sayaka stepped on top of the podium at the 2014 Scottish Open and, last year, grabbed top honours at the Jeonju Victor Korean Masters, a Grand Prix gold event. The good results fueled her desire to bid for a spot at the 2016 Rio Olympics and also to be recalled to Japan's national squad. To be selected to play for the national team, you need to have significantly good results. The first thing was to get good results in Japan at our national league competitions. As a non national player, I had to fund my own overseas tours while focusing on obtaining good results internationally. My other motivation was Olympics, that made me determined to win the matches in which I competed. While Sayaka was regaining momentum, her younger compatriots had moved up the ranks on the international scene. With only a maximum of two players from each NOC in each event allowed at the Summer Games, Sayaka missed out on making a second Olympic appearance after finishing third among the Japanese, behind Akane Yamaguchi and Nozomi Okuhara. Even though the international women's field is getting more demanding, and for Sayaka, it's equally competitive at home. The current world number 12 is determined to persevere and keep her dreams alive. I'll be 30 years old by the time the Tokyo Olympics arrive. But since I missed out on the Rio Summer Games, I'm very eager to play at the Tokyo Olympics. Okuhara got the bronze this year, so I think badminton Japan will be aiming for something higher. I would like to aim for the same. Tenacious and stoic in her relentless pursuit for success, Sayaka Sato will continue aiming to stand tall on the global stage. The world will see more of the fighter in her as she battles for more international glories. Tobofu 因为比较好打发时间 Time for some badminton trivia This week, we want you to guess who this former player is I was a women singles player I was a French player of Chinese origin I won three consecutive French Open titles. We'll reveal the answer after the break. After the break, we're in Bangkok as we find out how the Thai administrators are dazzling fans at the SCG Thailand Open.
Before the break, we asked you to guess who this former player is. I was a women's singles player. I was a French player of Chinese origin. I won three consecutive French Open titles. The answer is Pi Hongyan. Originally from Chongqing, China, Pi moved to France in 2002 to further pursue her badminton career after realizing that although talented, she wasn't good enough to make the cut for China's national team. The promising single shuttler soon found success in her adopted country. P stood on top of the podium at the French Open consecutively from 2003 to 2005. In 2009, P clinched the bronze medal at the BWF World Championships and became the first and only player from France to medal at the championships. The SCG Thailand Open caused a stir in bustling Bangkok recently when the country's oldest badminton tournament took center stage at the Nimibuta Stadium. We took our cameras to the capital city to find out why this event is so well received by the Thais. Thailand Open has been around for, I would say, pretty close to 30 years. Long, long history, way back. For a long time, it's only international event big international event in Thailand, so they consider this one of the, the, the biggest. This is my first time competing in the SCG Thailand Open. I have dreamt of competing in this event since I was a child, as this is the most prestigious and biggest badminton tournament in Thailand. All Thai players want to participate because it's the most well-known event in the country. It's also a chance to meet top international players, so I want to compete here every year. Badminton is on the rise in Thailand, and the sport has experienced an enormous growth in recent years. With Thai shuttlers finding success on the world stage, their players are receiving unprecedented levels of media and fan attention. And the local administrators are keen to capitalize on the growing demand and are looking to take the current Grand Prix Gold event to the next level. This month, we're going to submit the bidding paper and presentation to the BWF which they will, for 2018-2021, that's a four years next cycle. Hopefully we'll get a Super Series or a premier Super Series thing. It's mean a lot for Thailand, because they never host the world top badminton level here before. I think they host the world junior, which is different. That, that I think it could be a, a big icon booster for the host one of the world best events, and especially top 10 players in the world to come. They know, I don't think they ever have the event that all 10, top 10 players to play here in Bangkok. That would be a big, big award for, for, for the Thailand. And to show that they are ready to stage a premier event in Thailand, apart from meeting the required international standards, they've pulled out all the stops to impress at this year's edition of the SCG Thailand Open. Oh, in the past, it's all just just a tournaments. People going and playing, and even international tournament didn't have any special lighting. But now, when we put the lighting on, the LED around it, I said, "Are we doing a concert or what?" I said, "Yes, that's what I want to do. <laughs> It'll be a concert and sports. That's what make people more exciting." About. The action on the courts is, of course, the main attraction, but the Thais believe that the fan experience is equally key to capturing the interest of the audience. I, I live in USA, so I have a lot of experience watching NBA and other sport entertainment there. So when I came here a couple of years ago, that's why I proposed to them, let's, let's change the principle a little bit. Let's put a, a sport and entertainment. So now the technology is here just a matter of putting them together. So I think, I think that's the direction we want to go from now on. I am very impressed with the player's entrance and introduction onto court. It is something unusual and it's amazing. Usually at Grand Prix Gold events, there isn't a fancy entrance like this. It's just a common area where you walk onto court. The Thailand Open this year is really grand and it feels like you're at a premier level event. In a bid to help Thai shuttlers gain valuable exposure on the international scene, the nation also stages two other senior tournaments on the BWF calendar. 
Competing in Thailand has helped me gain international experience and I am more confident playing against higher ranked players. It's so much interest here and so many people play badminton here and we thought that if we have it at home, cheaper for the Thai player to travel here to play. Otherwise, we have to send them overseas to play. And per BWF, we're allowed to have I don't know, four or five international events and two GP goal. That's why we created another one earlier this year. So two GP goal and one international challenge. And we're looking to add one more international series with we allow four. So that, that to, to help the Thai player majority, 50% or more of the time they can play. And we want them to play in an in international setup and international experience with international players to come at home. More number to get a chance to play. Steeped in history and prestige, the SCG Thailand Open is the nation's premier badminton tournament for Thai shuttlers. And if the event is successful in taking the next step to reach Super Series status, it's another notch in the belt for Thai badminton. After the break, we are in Serbia to check in on their national badminton team. Visit our YouTube channel, badmintonworld.tv. There are tournament highlights, plays of the day, as well as past matches to savour. Missed an episode of Badminton Unlimited? Do not fret. All the episodes are available for your viewing pleasure. All the best badminton clips are just a click away. The second half of the MetLife BWF World Super Series was back in action after a mid-season break. Let's take a look at the Destination Dubai rankings in men's singles after tournaments in Tokyo and Seoul. A quarter-final finish in Korea sees Tian Ho Wei move up two places to reclaim his place at the top of the standings. The Chinese shuttler briefly relinquished the number one spot to Lee Chong Wei, who rose to the summit after the Malaysian grabbed the title in Japan. Son Wan Ho is also climbing the ladder. After reaching the final in Seoul, the Korean rises two places to number three. Lee Chong Wei, who did not compete in Korea, took a downward hit in the standings. The Malaysian superstar drops four places and is in fifth position. Mark Zwiebler, who moved into the top eight for the first time this year after reaching the semi-finals in Japan, is up another two spots after competing in Seoul. The German player is now at number six in the standings. Three Danish players feature in the top eight with Jano Jorgensen, Hans Christian Wittingus and Victor Axelsson in second, fourth and eighth, respectively. Log on to www.bwfworldsuperseries.com to read all the latest news and information on the MetLife BWF World Super Series tournaments. The Destination Dubai rankings are updated every Thursday following a Super Series event. So check in on the site to keep up to date on the top eight players in singles and doubles making their way to the finals in Dubai. As 2016 enters its final stretch, European badminton can look back on what has been a stellar season for the region. From Denmark's unprecedented win at the Thomas Cup to Carolina Marin's glorious gold medal triumph on sport's biggest stage, the Rio Olympics, Europe stands mightily proud. Their success has inevitably invited a wave of optimism within the continent. And one country that's hoping to ride on it is Serbia and its national badminton team. European Gold Olympic girl Karoli Marin became a role model for all high performance European players, for all young and promising players. Spain, Caroline, her association and a coach showed to the world that everything, even badminton is so demanding, sport is possible. 
Badminton Unlimited was in the Balkans recently, and we dropped by one of Serbia's national training sessions to find out how the country's best shuttlers are working hard to take their game to the next level. The Serbian national setup mirrors most other national badminton structures. However, other than two full-time coaches, the bulk of its coaching department is made up of coaches from Serbia's 13 badminton clubs. There is 60 players on the national team uh, in five categories. It's under 13, under 15, under 17, under 19 and elite players. So there is an uh, assistant national head coach and he's mostly uh, in charge for the youth categories, but we try to, on everyday basis, to consult and include all the other coaches from the, all other clubs. Based on a stringent set of criteria, the country selectors ensure only the best are chosen for the national team. These players are then put through specific training programs to hone their skills. Players are ev evaluated to through the whole year, but two times per year we try to make some assumption about technical abilities, te tactical abilities, psychological profiles. So we have some roster of players two times per year and we declare it to the other clubs in the association. For the youngsters, for the youth ones, it's mostly technical with tactical. For the elite ones, it's controlling the game. Uh, we try to be close to the Olympic level of playing, so that's the main focus for the elite ones. I was selected when I was 13 by my club coach and the funny thing about me is that I wasn't one of the best kids but I was really hard worker and uh, after a few years I really became one of the best girls in Serbia. It's great honor to be part of national team of Serbia especially when I see these kids playing on so high level it's 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 really great to be a part of this team. In recent years this hard work has shown encouraging progress not only in terms of on-court performances, but also on other key fronts as well. Development of Serbian badminton is going fast. We reached very significant and high level of international competition results, national association, organization and system in general. Uh, we are very proud of uh, vice champion in European under 15, uh, European championships. We are also very proud of Youth Olympic Games in Nanjing. Uh, we have also representatives in uh, European Games in Baku. So that's, right now this is the most important results for us. And they're keen to keep on pushing. Increasing the uptake of the sport is high on the agenda for Badminton Association of Serbia. And the administrators are confident they are heading in the right direction. Badminton is very demanding sport, especially regarding public and media promotion. We are doing our best to present all of our activities to general public in order to promote and to improve and to develop badminton throughout our country and region. We are running different development programs such as national and international competition development program, such as school development program as a part of a shuttle time and also para badminton as a part of a para Olympic sports promotion and development globally. We don't have such a, a broad number of players in Serbia right now, so every player is a special one. Every talented player is a special one, so we dedicated much attention to every, every one of them. And I think there's a main, 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 main challenge for us in long term also, but we are, I hope right now, achieving it quite okay. This positive spirit is already resonating well with everyone connected to Serbian badminton and they look forward to take some giant strides ahead. Of course, as every badminton player, my ambition is to represent Serbia at the Olympic Games, but I know it's a tough job, so um, I really want to improve my level and uh, to give my best on every training, so I think it will be better and better each year. I said it's too few international coaches there kind of laughed a little bit, but I will say it loudly. Uh, my main goal is to beat the Danish national team in any category. For the Serbia, it will be quite a challenge. I'm still young, we are the youngest federation, so time is in front of us. Bigger success may remain an uphill task for the Serbian national team, but with courage and perseverance, who knows what the future holds.
Before we go, let's see what the international circuit looks like as we check the Badminton Unlimited calendar. Next week on Badminton Unlimited, we are in Kuala Lumpur to speak to Badminton Association of Malaysia about the country's best ever Olympic performance. See you next week.